Road safety. It's an issue, I'm happy to guess, that governments, both state and federal, have spent billions of dollars over the decades to try and address. But despite that, last year Australia's road toll reached its highest level in five years. In 2022, 1,160 people died on our roads with split-second misjudgments, poor weather, driver inexperience and driver fatigue, mostly to blame. Almost every state and territory had a higher death toll on its roads compared to the previous year. And during the recent holidays, the nation's highways were plagued with deadly accidents. Now, Peter Fraser is the founder of Safer Australian Roads and Highways, or the Sarah Group. He started that group after his daughter Sarah was killed on the Hume Highway south of Sydney. Peter joins us now. Morning to you, Peter. Yeah, good morning, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Dreadful year uh, on our roads, just looking at those numbers. What do you think is yeah. going wrong? Look, I think the um, what we've got to do is to change behaviour and... Uh, We've got a raft of uh, strategies which will allow us to do that. Uh, two days ago, we um, celebrated an award which we created uh, now two years ago, so, uh, Senator Alex Gallagher Road Safety Award in honour of uh, Senator Gallagher who died uh, back in 2021. But that award is to talk about the sorts of people who are out there making an incredible difference. And one of them uh, for this year was Alex Janik, who uh, runs uh, AccuSensus. And that's the, everyone be familiar now with the forward-looking uh, mobile camera detection system. Yeah, yeah. We see in New South Wales, it's accounted for at least over the last two years, uh, 122 people, being their lives being saved and countless others being um, um, not having serious injuries in road crashes because of being able to remove distraction. We see that those sorts of technologies when being applied, save lives and prevent serious injuries. And I think this, the sorts of things that we can do, we actually know about it right now. We can do things such as ensure people are slowing down, ensuring people are keeping to the speed limit and ensuring people get rid of distraction are fundamental to trying to, uh, to lower the uh, death toll on our roads every year and it was a terrible year last year. It it was and that's what I want to ask you about though because you know police statistics show there's a fatal five so speeding, uh, drink or drug driving distracted driving, driving without a seatbelt and fatigue. They they contribute strongly to Australia's death toll on the roads. They seem like simple rules to follow. Don't speed don't drive if you're drunk or you're on drugs. What do you think's going wrong though? Why do you think those numbers are are still high and what can we do to change those behaviours? Certainly, the, uh, those uh, numbers are incredibly high because people don't take this serious. What happens is that they say, look, in my situation, I'm able to speed, I'm able to uh, drive drunk, I'm able to uh, drive distracted because there's a low, low risk of me being caught. There's a low risk of me being uh, pulled over the side of the road. So for the individual, that's true. The thing is, and you're, you'd be, I know you're well aware of our um, Drive to Other Survive campaign, which we've been yeah. running now for 10 years, but that turns it on its head and says you're responsible for everyone on the road ahead because everyone's got a right to get home safe. Now, what we've got to do is to ensure we're pushing those sorts of messages as opposed to just talking about the driver um, and the risk to the driver of being killed and serious injury, seriously injured and talk about the fact that we've got a responsibility to everyone in the community to look after them so that everyone gets home safe. So that's the first thing. But also to use our automated technologies which exist now so that we can change behaviour. You know, we're really pleased with what uh, what New South Wales and also now Queensland, despite the fact that Queensland's had a, a really shocking year in actual fact, mm. where they're actually bringing in these, these systems and saying, OK, the likelihood of you now being caught is much higher. And if you compare what goes on in New South Wales to, say, Victoria with those systems, we're talking about a reduction of 83% in the uh, the number of fatals and the number of serious injuries associated with um, the use of mobile phones, seatbelts, and also speeding, because these systems actually can um, detect all of those. And, of course, we can also have uh, police being... uh, um, uh, involved directly with that to pull people over and to actually find them so that people are getting, uh, you know, finding out that their behaviour uh, was the thing that's caused them to be pulled over, mm. not just receiving a, um, uh, a notice in the uh, 
uh, the post six yeah. to eight weeks after the event. That, that's right. Yeah, the, not, not not a delayed response, but actually getting that fine on the side of the road and, and sending that message. Yeah. And, and as you say, the technology is there. Can I just ask you though, COVID nineteen, right? I mean, some people might yep. listen to the death toll and say, well. Well, yeah, you know, last year there were fewer people on the road. So, of course, it was going to be higher last year. Not that simple, though, because I do know it's it's the highest it's been in five years. However, mm. is there another hurdle here, Peter? Not only were fewer people on the roads, but maybe drivers' skills have been a bit rusty uh, over the last couple of years because people haven't been on the road. I mean, is that is that actually one of the challenges that we're dealing with at the moment? It absolutely is one of the challenges. You know, if we, we compare what happened once we had the lockdown system, we, we actually had less people driving. But people who were driving were then believing that they're going to have much less chance of being caught and driving at far, the faster rates and having serious injuries and death uh, resultant in that. But we also got the experience that people haven't been out on, on the roads and so therefore they're less experienced when they get out there. And that also has been a contributing factor according to the Centre for Accident Research and Road Safety up in Queensland. These are these are really important things for us to, to think about. But I, I think the, the, the most important one is if we're looking at behavioural change, we've got to take that emphasis just off the driver being killed or seriously injured and talk about what happens to others because that's such an important factor in, uh, in our road talk. Peter, just finally, I hope you don't mind me asking, uh, but it's it's been almost 11 years now, hasn't it? February 2012, yeah. when, when you lost Amazing Sarah. I, yeah. and, and I just wanted to ask, because, you know, Christmas time and, 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 you know, festive season for so many families, how, how are you going? And on top of that, you know, you've devoted your life now to improving safety on the roads. Looking back over those 11 years, do, do you feel that there has been, you know, improvement? How are you feeling? Yeah, look... Um, it, it's incredibly tough for us, I've got to say. Uh, we've got a, a, a candle, which I'm looking at right now, with uh, Sarah's face on, which was sent across to us uh, from Ireland, uh, where we uh, um, basically we, we've been fortunate that we've been able to take campaigns to um, you know, much further than, than just our own jurisdiction, New South Wales, across Australia and now, uh, to a certain extent, globally. Breaks my heart. Um, you know, mm. at Christmas we had all our... Our family here, um, my mum actually is very ill and dying at present, and mm. we uh, we light that candle, and uh, and she's uh, she's there in, in spirit with us. But you know, I look at the uh, the fact that there's this year there'll be uh, you know thirteen thousand Australians who've been killed since my beautiful daughter was killed in, in that tragedy on the Hume Freeway, completely avoidable tragedy. Had, had that person been looking ahead and not distracted. Uh, and I think about all those other people as well, Sarah, who um, sit and look at something which reminds them of their beautiful loved one at Christmas time. So it's incredibly tough. But I'm also being really proud of the fact that my beautiful daughter's face is now associated with road safety you know, here in Australia and also overseas because she's not just a statistic. And that's the problem. All these We talk about these people as being statistics. They're all loved ones and they'll be missed by the their families, their friends, their community for the rest of their lives. And she'd be incredibly proud of you, Peter, as you were of her. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks very much, Tom. Peter Fraser there, founder of Safer Australian Roads and Highways.